and welcome back. Today we are going to finish decorating this. Well, I say finish, we're going to start and then finish decorating this iron farm, which presently is just an awful lot of stone. I would like it to not be quite so stony. My plan is to make this look a little bit more inviting and to make it look more like a market room, like a market hall or something. I just like the idea that instead of being all stony and cavey, there's like little pockets where people have set up stalls or they're doing research or something. Like, technically these guys are trapped in there, but if we can make it feel like this is maybe a job that they're doing somehow, I don't know, that, that kind of... that feels like it would be quite nice. And I need to sort out this collection area a bit. Currently you just have to hop down these stairs, but I think I'm going to sink this lower part. I'm going to have all the, um, the hoppers connect to a central area, and then I'm going to have some kind of drop down, whether it's water or whether I do like a spiral staircase. I don't know yet. But I like the idea that we come down to this middle point. Maybe there's even a pond. Maybe it's water and like some parts are the way up and some parts are the way down. I just have to make sure it's spawn proofed again, otherwise the uh, golems will just spawn in the water. But yeah, I don't have a set plan for this place. I just have a rough idea of what I want. It's more of a vibe. I know the vibe I want and it's just going to be a case of getting it right. And I do still need to move these villagers because they are... I mean, they're not causing too big a problem here, but I will still move them. I will probably... Well, I'll probably just cut across and go maybe like in here or up here somewhere. Maybe up here. I can just chuck them bread every now and again, keep the numbers up, and then when I'm ready, when the outside space is ready, I can chuck them out into the greater outer world and they can go thrive in the hills. They can go spread out through the... Uh, spread out through the whole village, excuse me. I'm pretty sure these things can spawn on... Um, pretty much everything. I think they can spawn on crafting tables and stuff like that, because I have spawn proofed over here. And I don't quite know... Is it... Nope, that's a half. That's a... Yeah, they're either spawning on the barrels or they're spawning on the crafting tables, because everything's carpeted, or is a slab, or... I don't know if they can spawn on the dripstone. I just kind of assumed they couldn't, since the block was already occupied. Anyway, move some villagers, tidy the room. Those are my plans for the day. First I need to empty out my shulker boxes because there's an awful lot of mostly stone. So it's time to do some tidying up. Actually, do I still have some carpet? Because I'm going to need it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Alright. Well. I can't stop you. What? Wait. I'm very confused. I dread to think how much stone I have now. This is all stone, so all of that is stone. This one is stone. These back here are stone. Some of these here are stone and cobble. And then some of these are also stone. I just have way too much stone and more golems. I think I've got a good selection of stuff to be going off with. Um, Mostly just different stones and bricks and some greenery. But I am just going to go check and see how the sniffer farm is doing, because it might be nice to use some of the, the ancient flowers and stuff. How are we doing? It's doing alright. Um, let's take half of each. Probably not going to use 30 pitcher pods, but we'll take them anyway. How are you guys doing? You keep getting stuck in there. I am going to have to move the vine, I think, because I think this is what they're getting stuck on. Right. Come on out. Oh yeah, they should not get stuck in there anymore. Please don't cry about it. I think this is egg number 10. Yes, this is eggy number 10. I doubt I'm ever going to need 10 sniffers, but I just like to have extra. Before I do anything there, I am quickly going to move these villagers. I'm hoping if I just block them in with some dirt, I can literally just tunnel them. Lock them off here. But you need to dig somewhere for them to go, don't I? Can't go too far in here because it will connect back up to my little underground cave. I'm probably going to have to turn a bit and drop them. Now, if I just steal their beds, they should follow the beds. Hopefully. Can I fit these last beds? I can just fit them all. I'm sorry, villager. I hit you. Go on. Into the beds. Oops. 
I don't mind the arrow. Actually, I need to move them back, don't I? Otherwise I can't get another row in if I want more. There you go. I think that's everybody in. It looks about the right kind of number. Yep, I think that's everybody. Ta-da. I'll just mark that with a torch or something. I'll probably still get golems spawning out in this corridor. Yep. Oh well. I wonder if I put some in... Yeah, if I put a golem in there with them... If I give them somewhere to spot... Oh, hello guys. Come on, back in. Nope, stop, stop it. Oh, fine, they'll come back in at night. Well, they're having fun, bless them. Wait, where's the door wet? Here it is. If I spawn... Or if I put somewhere for a golem to spawn in here, hopefully it'll stop them triggering more. I've got plenty of iron, I might just uh, spawn one. I'm just going to wait around for it to become night. See if these guys will go back to bed. See, I like having them around. It's just... I'm not ready for them yet. You need to set it up so there's beds and stuff so they don't wander off too far. Oh, that's where they're spawning. They are actually spawning on the crafting table. Well, I'll just let him take care of himself. Have they gone beddy bites? Come on, are you trying to get to bed? You're just spinning on a... Spinning on a lily pad. That's lovely, but go to bed. Okay, fine. You're going to be stuck up there. Yep, that's good enough for me. Back. And their beddy buys. Also, yes, putting a golem in with the villagers seems to have stopped them spawning a new one out here, so that should be that problem solved. I just thought I'd come check on my villagers in the village, because I haven't checked on them in a while, and I had noticed that the numbers were going down, and I didn't know why. And, uh, yeah, it was really quiet, and I was quite worried that I'd lost them all to something. And I have. It's the pig pen. Oh. How many has that been? Is that like... I think that was 11? Don't squabble about it, just get out the gate. Thank you. Oh, it was 12. Two of you were in there. Come on. Come on. Thank you. Well, that explains things. I do check that pig pen, and there's usually two or three in there, but not like 12. Oh, there's me now. Are you stuck in a bush? Hello? There you go. I don't know how you managed that. And now back to building. Yep, that keeps happening. That keeps happening. I'm not too worried about it. I think uh, if it's any any kind of trouble, Horatio will come and tell me. Whee! But that is the little jobs done anyway, so I can get on with decorating. I think I'll decide what I'm doing with the middle, and then spread out from there. It's always tempting to just start fiddling away with the walls, but... I don't need to do that yet, because I don't know what's going to be covering them, so... Yes, middle point.
it is, the Iron Farm decorated. I'm really happy with how it came out, I, considering this was kind of done on the fly. I, I really like it. Everything is spawn-proofed, as far as I can tell, and uh, it seems to be working just fine. Now, I might change this stairway. I might make it slabs that go up at a slope rather than a sharp angled stairs because everything in this base so far has been ramps. It hasn't been sharp stairways like that so I think it makes sense to change it. I'll just maybe do that another day because I might put more around here. There might be storage or something. We'll see. I have generally just decorated the walls and tattied it up a little bit. I've added some greenery. I've added some texture but everything again has to be like golem proof so they have to have more than two full blocks in order to be able to spawn they do occasionally still spawn in here but uh, they sort themselves out shall we say they uh, they just suffocate in the walls which is very sad but kind of handy i have put some little veggie beds in here you can't put flower beds in because they can just spawn on top of the plants which is a shame unless you put a roof in so i just put them in like these little alcoves in the walls as if the villagers that work here are just growing things for fun it's pretty cute, I like how it looks. And over on this side we've got the, the pitcher pods and we've got the torch flowers as well. That's nice, that's kind of cute. This one's got a little slab roof with the bottom slab so nothing spawns up there. And if we look here, I'll just show you. I've put these um, ladders up so you can get up to where the villagers would get in. I kind of like the idea that the villagers are doing this as a job. Oh, you can see them peeking. I kind of like the idea the villagers are doing this as a job so they can get in and out of these. That just kind of implies that they can, rather than being stuck forever in a glass prison of horror. We'll, we'll pretend that's not the case. Got piles of storage, as usual, you know what I'm like. And uh, a wood pile, because again, I've always got to have a wood pile. Everything is uh, spawn-proofed. It's either got plant pots or it's got the campfires or it's got moss carpets. All the foliage has moss carpets on the top as well, because golems can spawn in leaves, because of course they can. They can spawn everywhere, pretty much. They are very troublesome. I was planning on putting markets in, but I decided against it and instead just put this one stall in, which for amusement purposes is now the safety officer. I like the idea that there's somebody keeping an eye on all the villagers here, keeping an eye on the zombies as well. It's just a load of bookcases, maybe for records. There's more storage, this one is very much catered towards iron, so the iron is being displayed here. It's a shame I have to put carpets on it, but you do. Um, and then this is a little wee pond, which again, everything at the bottom here is half slabs, so nothing can spawn in here, even on these side bits. It's all carpets or half slabs, and so far so good. This back here is a little cut through I made to get to the back of my melon and pumpkin farm. Punch through the vines occasionally. That's my vine farm. This is my melon and pumpkin farm, there's my bamboo, these are the frogs, and then it goes back into the storage here. I wasn't planning on putting a cut through in, but I just spent so much time running backwards and forwards to the main storage area that I thought I need a cut through. This is taking so long. So yeah, so far, really happy with it. It's really pretty. The decoration doesn't seem to be causing any problems because everything is accounted for. As for this middle bit down to the collection point, I was planning on doing water and then I couldn't be bothered. I tried a couple of things, um, which I don't even think I replayed. I don't even think I got it in the replay footage. It just looked really weird because I had to kind of box it in and it, it looked too... I don't know, like the cave was so kind of rough and organic that then having this big boxed water bit in the middle seemed really weird, which is why I put that little bit of water there. So now it is a hole down with a spiral staircase, which I really like. I, it seems to fit this space really nicely. I didn't plan how big this was going to be, it just turned out really nicely. But then once I'd left it as a hole in the ground, I realised I actually wanted something above it as well. And I was just kind of thinking of putting a frame in, and then I thought, well, join it up to the ceiling, make it like a big column that they've repurposed as part of the um, part of the structure of the farm. And I really like how it's come out. I like that it's sort of structural here, and then it goes all rough and natural up there. And again, all spawn-proofed. The only thing that isn't is slabs, the top slabs of the stairs. They... So far haven't caused any problems, I've not seen any golems spawning down here, so I'm hoping they're too far out of the way. Maybe not enough space on them. I'm coming down, it's easier to just drop and glide, but uh, we'll use the stairs for showcasing purposes. And then all of the iron comes in here, and as you can see I've already got a ton of iron blocks. I used two I think on making the hoppers to extend the collection system out to here, and I think I've got two in storage that were just... I took them out whilst I was building the storage system. I took everything out and turned it into blocks and then uh, didn't put it back. I put it into my main storage that I took through and emptied out. 
and this collects on both sides. So all of it at the moment is stored in this one, and this is the new stuff that I haven't collected recently, which has actually only been going for about 20 minutes since I last did a collection, so that's pretty good. And then I've got bone meal here. I've got it in two sides, just, just on the off chance I forget about this place, and then I come back to check on it, and it is just full. I can then just have two bone meal farms emptying into one composter, and I should be able to free up my chests really easily. But yes, so far, this farm has been going for maybe... At max eight hours I would say. So I feel like it's doing really well so far considering it's not specifically built to be the most efficient. I'm quite happy with what it's producing so far but iron has been a little bit of a bottleneck for me recently. There has been an awful lot of things like chains and lanterns I've wanted to build or use with and then I just have to kind of limit myself because I don't have enough iron. Now, that shouldn't be an issue. I can do whatever I want. So we can go and make a start on the town and maybe even make a start on the forge soon. I am no longer restricted by my iron stores. So I'm not sure what the next project is going to be because I've got a few things planned, but we can just... Oh, we're off again. You know what? We should maybe go check that out because admittedly I've been ignoring it a little bit. I do kind of assume if it's anything serious that Horatio will come and tell me, so hopefully it's fine, because Horatio has not been to tell me. Oh, we have a different visitor. Hello. What's the problem? You're going to tell me. Oh, angry noise. Oh, very angry noise. What's up? Something's scaring you. There's, there's something I need to go see. Okay, don't go too close to the lava, please. I know what you parrots are like. Come here. So this is the uh, canary from our mines. Yeah, it seems kind of distressed, so I think we'd better go check out and see what the problem is. It definitely wants us to go look at something. Still don't have a zoom yet, so I'm going to have to use the spyglass. See if there's anything going on out there. Now, what's going... going on? What... What is going on? Oh, gosh! Well, that was rude, and I was lucky that didn't kill my parrot. Wow, what a distraction. That's a new dragon. This dragon is very big. Wow, okay. And it looks like it's come out of this hole here. Yeah, so we slithered out of here. Look at the size of it. This is just the tail tip. The size of this thing. Look at it slouching over the ravine. Oh, the donkey. Oh, the donkey seems fine. These are some big feet. I think we can safely assume that this is an amethyst drake. It's all covered in roots and dirt. It must have been underground. It's got cherries as well. Some kind of blossom, which it's leaving everywhere. We get a good look at its face. Quite a chunky beast. It's got quite the underbite. He's definitely admiring that amethyst chunk. Now that this thing is here, I realise we don't actually know anything about it. It was noted as a deterrent for the burrowing worm, which obviously burrows and steals gems and can be quite dangerous to settlements because it's very lavery and digs tunnels and settlements don't like lava and tunnels really do they but we don't actually know anything about this guy i didn't realize he was going to be quite so big his belly's like a great big amethyst geode he's so fixated on the uh, amethyst i don't think he's going to notice us up here now i'm not particularly concerned about this brick being here because well it seems peaceful enough it has approached the village politely the worst it has done is put a footprint on a road it has been mindful of the donkey. The donkey is fine. All it's doing is admiring this... This... This amethyst. It seems... Tentative. It seems to be shy. If it wanted to come in and crush the village to steal all the amethysts for itself, I, it easily could have done. But it hasn't. It's just sort of turned up and is having a quick look. 
So I don't think we have much to worry about with this one, but we'll still get the librarians to have a look and see what they can find about it. What I am concerned about is why Horatio didn't see this at all. Why didn't he see? He sees so much. Why did he not see this approaching? So it is probably for the best that we go visit Horatio and see what's up. Hey guys, how's everything going? So, Horatio, have you, uh, have you seen anything? Have you, have you seen anything that might distress a cockatiel? Because that cockatiel was kind of frightened. You haven't seen anything? No? Alright. Have you seen anything in the water since you've been here? No? Okay. That's uh, a bit worrying. Well, the, the amethyst drake turned up. Mm-hmm. And it seems to be fine, but it is a little alarming that we didn't get any warning about it. I'm not, I'm not blaming you. I'm just kind of curious as to why. You just, just didn't see. Okay. Well, to be honest, given the circumstances we could do with your vision, we could do to figure out how you have this vision and where it comes from and why you can only see in that one big pool. So, would you be a good boy and go back to the pool? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you. Don't worry, you can all come. You don't have to go on your own. Yeah. Come on, we'll all go. Bring the whole squad, who still don't have names. Everybody come in? Yeah, everybody's here. There's a good boy. Now, please... Please do your best and just try to see things. Just until we get this figured out. And you guys as well. Maybe you guys will see things. Although, to be fair, I think this one's just dreaming of food. What is it about this particular pond? Like, I know it's a wishing well. And that maybe, maybe there's something to do with that. Because it's, I don't know, connected to so much like positivity and people's hopefulness. This is people throwing in their, their most important and valued wishes. Well, I'm sure we can find some kind of answer. I don't want you to be stuck in here forever, that's not very fair. But it's also not great when giant dragons can sneak up like that. So we need to keep an eye on this guy, to make sure he's not up to anything too troublesome. And we need to get the librarians studying this. What info can they find in those books? But with this giant crystal -y mystery, I shall have to call it here for this episode. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed, and I hope to see you again next time. I am, for a little bit, going to ease up on the schedule, the posting schedule. Just a little. It's not going to be a huge change. I just need a little bit more breathing room for some of these projects. So please bear with me, and I will be with you in good time. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and bye-bye! I'm trying not to break the leaves. Don't break the leaves. <laughs>